Over the years, there's been a number of intense debates in the racing game genre world. Gran Turismo vs Forza, physics vs graphics, paper vs plastic. Okay, maybe not that last one. But the most intense debate that I saw of all was Project Cars vs The World. On one side, you had a group of supporters that had their undying support for the game. On the other, you have a bunch of people who were hating on it and dressing it down at any opportunity they had. I mean, come on guys, it's just a video game. But despite the haters and those who just weren't overly turned on by the game, including yours truly, Project Cars went on to sell over a million copies in its first month alone, which is a hell of a lot of copies for a sim racing title. So, like any good blockbuster, shortly after Project Cars was released, Project Cars 2 was confirmed. And now, fast forward two years, and it's time to see if lightning strikes twice. So, is it worth your time and money? And can it turn the most hardened Project Cars haters around? That's what we're here to find out in our review of Project Cars 2 on the PC. Racing simulator provided by Next Level Racing and their new 2-in-1 F1 GT cockpit. Whether you like the upright GT seating position or low slung F1 seating position, the F1 GT has you covered at a price that won't break the bank. Learn more at nextlevelracing.com. For Project Cars 2, Slightly Mad Studios has improved on the horizontal scroll layout of the original game by breaking it up into six sections that are easy to decipher thanks to the descriptive and attractive graphic design. As you dive deeper into the menus, they become even more clear and concise, eliminating the muscle memory that other sims require you to have as you plow through page after page, trying to find the one setting you want to get to. Thankfully, you can now make adjustments while at the track, such as mapping buttons, adjusting the camera, audio levels, and even graphic options. This is the way it should be in every sim, and it's nice to see. Also, something that Project Cars 2 has that many other sims do not are explanations for every single option in the sim. Hallelujah! And while we're talking about menus, there's a couple things that we want to point out that might help you along your way in Project Cars 2. Under configuration and controls is brake sensitivity. For some reason, it's set to 35% when you start up the game, making it tough to stop if you already run a heavy pedal. As the excellent help prompt explains, 50% gives you a one-to-one -one relationship between your physical input and the in-game response. By default, the car and world aren't 100% in sync. When the track surface dips, the car only dips half the amount, giving the odd visual of the dash bouncing up and down. If you don't care for this, head to Options, Camera, Movement, World Movement, and set it to 100%. Now the dash will move up and down as you bound across the track. And FYI, some of the footage in this review is shot with that setting at 50%, so the dash is bouncing up and down, and the rest of it is shot at 100% with it locked in place. In the end, I do prefer it being locked at 100%. With 180 cars at launch, Project Cars 2 about doubles its car count over the original. Is this a good thing? For the most part, yes. Slightly Mad Studios has done a good job establishing 29 unique series and filling them with like-minded cars. Racing against different cars from different manufacturers in your class really ups the immersion level. In terms of car types, if you're a sports car fan or a road car fan, new or old, then you have very little to complain about with a good selection of cars. Rallycross makes its debut in Project Cars 2 and is also well represented. If there's one hole in the cars list, it's the lack of modern open wheel cars. Besides the Formula Renault 3.5 and IndyCar, the rest are fantasy, leaving a bit to be desired. But outside of that, it is a good list. To be blunt, the tracks in Project Cars 1 weren't very good. Thankfully, this isn't the case in Project Cars 2. An impressive 60 tracks are featured in the second installment, with 20 of them being brand new and either laser scanned or drone scanned. We don't know which tracks are laser scanned or drone scanned, but in the end, it doesn't really matter because they all feel good. Across the board, the new tracks feel right and are in line with their laser scanned brethren in other sim racing titles. From the baby smooth blacktop at Coda to the bumpy city streets of Long Beach, 
the new tracks have character in spades. As for the tracks from Project Cars 1, they also appear to have received some work. Bathurst, which was way too flat in the first game, now feels like you're actually driving up and down a mountain. But there are still a handful of corners that don't feel quite right from the original list. The penultimate corner at Road America feels flat and not nearly as challenging as it is in real life. Also, the last two corners at Watkins Glen feel like they are lacking the camber that makes them really enjoyable. But with that said, there are still big improvements over the Project Cars 1 versions that left me skipping them out of frustration. Speaking of frustration, there are some other track details that almost made me drop the tracks from the pros category. There are multiple issues with pit road. On a number of tracks, just passing the entrance will trigger the pit road prompt, which is super annoying. The game automatically applies a pit speed limiter to your car when you enter. You can at least steer your car now, unlike in Project Cars 1, but I like to hit a pit speed limiter, or not if the car doesn't have one, myself. Also, the 37 mile per hour speed limit at every track feels lazy. The speed limit should be dependent on the track and the series running. I was also turned off by the foreign objects that pop up at some tracks. The concrete barrier that divides Pit Road from the track at Daytona in Texas needs to go. I assume it's there to prevent some sort of issue with the AI, but it's not there in real life, so a solution needs to be figured out so it can be removed. The tall marker cones at the apex of some corners also need to go. At the very least, an option should be added to remove them because they're silly for anyone who's a seasoned sim racer. Besides, the AI likes to mow them down on lap one anyway, so they really aren't doing much good. Lastly, and this is a very long documented pet peeve of mine, the Project Cars 2 signage placed alongside the track. We know what game we're playing. You don't have to tell us. They look ridiculous, especially at a place like Indy. So please, just stop. Despite those complaints, Project Cars 2 gets the big things right when it comes to tracks, having a large selection of believable feeling tracks from all over the world. The physics in Project Cars 2 are a big improvement over the original game. In Project Cars 1, all the cars had a similar on top of the track feel. For 2, the cars differentiate themselves thanks to the tire model with some sidewall give. Are there some cars that show better than others? Yes. The modern sports cars, both GT and prototypes, show well. The tire model on both cars allow you to catch them if you make a mistake but you'll have to have quick hands with the prototype thanks to the point and shoot nature of a high downforce car. The road and track going cars also show well with a good amount of pitch and catch allowed thanks to tire flex and some semblance of body roll when compared to the modern race cars. Older sports cars such as Group C start to become a little more challenging as they feel more on top of the track. The modern IndyCar also feels a little more on top of the track than a car producing 6,800 pounds of downforce should. Also, I had a few hmm moments with the braking physics. I could really slam onto the brakes on the BMW M6 GT car that doesn't have ABS. Also, it seemed like I could really hustle the Nissan GTP ZX Turbo into the corners for a car that's as old as I am and without carbon brakes and equipped with an H pattern shifter. But even with those critiques, the physics in Project Cars 2 are much more enjoyable than they were in Project Cars 1. Now, do I prefer the physics in Project Cars 2 over the more recent offerings from titles such as iRacing, Assetto Corsa, Automobilista? I wouldn't go quite that far, but I wouldn't put them that much further below those three and that's a pretty enviable position to be at. Project Cars 2 has very good force feedback. Not only is it an improvement over the original game, but it might be some of the best force feedback in sim racing today. Thankfully, Slightly Mad Studios has narrowed the ridiculous list of force feedback options in Project Cars 1 down to three flavors and five manageable settings. The flavors, immersive, informative, and raw, allow you to focus more on road feel, which is immersive and informative, or getting all the force feedback strength you can, raw. From there, you can further tune by adjusting gain, volume, tone, and effects. I found myself bouncing between informative and raw, depending on the car, then adjusting the gain and volume on the fly thanks to mapping them to my wheel. When I needed more wheel weight, I turned gain up. 
When I wanted more surface detail, volume went up. Whichever way I ended up going, I always found the force feedback to be strong and very detailed. It's a real joy driving over rough track surfaces and feeling all the car's vertical motions being translated to the wheel. The tuning menu, or garage, is executed well in Project Cars 2. The layout is sensical, and most important of all, you can feel the changes you make when you go back out and drive. Also neat is the new Virtual Crew Chief, which makes adjustments based off of your feedback on the car. The changes aren't big, so if you're way off, I'm not so sure it will help that much, but it does a great job of explaining the reasoning behind the changes and hopefully teaches you something new. And speaking of explaining, every adjustment in the tuning menu comes with a detailed explanation the way it should be. Again, can I get an amen? The only issue we experience with the tuning menu is it not having air pressure in PSI, even though we selected the game to use Imperial units. Being able to drive on any date, at any time, with essentially any type of weather you want, is very impressive. After Sims being locked in the static environments for so long, it's nice to finally see a title that blows the door open. Not only does the effect work well on track, but the setup of it is beautifully easy. Being able to dictate when the weather rolls in based on number of slots used and time multiplier gives a good idea of what you'll get during your race. Of course, if you want to play fast and loose, you can turn on random weather, but be prepared for silliness such as flurries at Le Mans in June. In terms of driving and weather, specifically rain, the effect feels believable. When it starts to rain, you can stay out on slicks for a handful of laps and let the heat in the track and tires fend off the moisture. But before long, the car starts to slide and it's time to get on wets. It's also cool seeing the reverse effect with the dynamic track drying as you run. Rallycross comes to Project Cars 2 and it is pretty well done. While not being able to set up heat races is a con, everything else about it is a positive. Having six cars and circuits automatically shoots it towards the top of titles that support Rallycross in terms of sheer content. The AI races you pretty hard, harder than they do in other disciplines, making for a lot of Rubbin's racing moments. Physics-wise, the cars slide a lot more in Project Cars 2 than they do in other Rallycross titles, making you readjust how hard you get into the corners and put the power down. But once you do adjust, the partial throttle dance on the edge of adhesion becomes pretty entertaining. The graphics in Project Cars 2 are all over the place. There are times when the car, track, time of day, and weather conditions come together to make the game look really good. Then, there are other times when all of these conditions come together to make it look really bad. It's very strange, and I can't recall another racing title with so much variance. For example, I thought everything about the GT3 cars at Coda looked good. Cars, track, weather, lighting, all looked sharp. Then I raced the Indy cars at Indy, and it was a fuzzy mess of textures. Across the board, car interiors look nice, the vibration effect of wipers and antennas are really cool, weather conditions are done well, the trackside cameras are well positioned for replays, but beyond that, it's a crapshoot. Shadows popping in and out are brutal. Draw distance, something that really isn't an issue these days, becomes an issue again. Track surface texturing is just bland and they all look like a copy and paste job instead of a recreation of the real world track. Look at Daytona for example. The in-game track surface is more gray than it is in real life and the oval hasn't been repaved since 2011 so it's not like it changed while Slightly Mad Studios was working on the game. The game's overall color is also pretty washed out leading us to suggest turning down the gamma to help this out. On the bright side, Project Cars 2 continues to offer some of the best VR support out there and now has triple screen support. Unfortunately though, there are some negative caveats attached. For the life of me, I couldn't get my three screens to align. The side screens were vertically off even though I was following the triple screen setup perfectly. Also, like Project Cars 1, the game is tough on PC hardware. To run in both VR and triple screen support, my graphics settings had to be turned down to a level it didn't look so hot. I know I don't have a GTX 1080 Ti, but a 1070 and Ryzen 7 CPU should be sufficient enough to warrant at least high graphical settings. They are in other titles, thus allowing them to look much better while running at much higher frames per second than I get in Project Cars 2. 
The silver lining of the frames per second is that the game runs much better at 60 frames per second than pretty much all other racing titles out there, and the massive drop in frames per second from weather that Project Cars 1 experienced is a thing of the past. On average, I saw between 5 and 10 FPS drop in the rain, which is pretty good. In the end, the graphical pros and cons in Project Cars 2 average out, thus leaving us in the neutral category. We almost put sounds into the pros category. The in-game engine notes in Project Cars 2 are really good. While not every exterior engine note is amazing, there are a lot that are also very good. But there are just some sounds that I can't overlook. The tire screeching sound is terrible. It's too high pitch and electronic sounding. Even worse is the crashing sound. While I appreciate the attempt to make crashes sound violent, I fail to comprehend how I'm hearing glass shattering in a glassless indie car. If you want to use the sound with a road car, great. But please, cater the crash sounds to different cars. Also, not great is the default audio mixing. External cameras make it sound like your car is five times louder than any of the AI cars around you. Plus, the building and fading of sound when a car goes by a static camera isn't nearly severe enough. Lastly, our friend Crash Sound comes in loud and clear, way too loud and clear for an external camera. As for the radio talk, the engineer likes to repeat annoying lines, and apparently the spotter is a mute, despite having all the proper settings turned on. So despite having much better engine notes, unfortunately, the other sounds in Project Cars 2 weigh them down. Hopefully, these issues will be addressed in future patches. The game modes in Project Cars 2 are pretty straightforward. This time around, career mode has a little more of a ladder system than the start in any car you want approach of the first game, but it still lets you be pretty liberal. For example, I was able to start in a Group C car, which are far from being beginner cars. Pick a ladder to ascend, race, win, move up, race in one-off races along the way. That's career mode in a nutshell, which isn't a bad thing. Quick race allows you to do as the name suggests, and let's be honest, will probably be the go-to mode for most folks. I'm a little disappointed not to see custom championships, considering all the cool content on both the track and car side, I think some really neat custom championships could be created based off the cars and series from the real world, but unfortunately that isn't an option. Lastly, we have multiplayer, and unfortunately there isn't much we can say at this time because there is no way for us to test it pre-release. This is too bad because multiplayer could be one of the major selling points of the game, but we'll just have to see how it plays out with the rest of you upon release. I wanted to quickly talk about Live Track 3.0. In fairness, I don't think I had a proper amount of time to entirely vet the system since I was only able to run a couple two hour plus long races, but from what I experienced, it does seem like the cars gain grip as the track darkens up from the rubber being laid down, which is cool. I am surprised that there isn't an option to speed up the track changes like you can do with weather, but again, this is something that will have to be investigated more, which is why it isn't listed as a pro, but for now, I wanted to at the very least note it. Oh, the damage model. At times, really well done. Other times, extremely frustrating. On the pro side, it's cool to see body parts being shed. It's cool to see suspension damage if the contact is on the wheel. I like how bumpers can come unhinged and bounce around, especially in Rallycross. On the con side, sometimes cars just magically fix themselves. Contact that should absolutely result in race ending damage does not. AI that have front wings missing are still out there running like nothing is wrong at times. And what the hell is up with shattered windshields on race cars? Developers, racing windshields are plastic not glass. Stop making them shatter. I mean, even road-going cars don't shatter like how it does in Project Cars 2. They're much smaller pieces and it all holds together. I'm tired of seeing this. 
So in the end, the damage model is a hit and miss. Sometimes it's well done, other times not as much. At best, the AI is a non-issue. They never race you spectacularly, but at least they don't cause a mess. At worst, they're a shit show. Many old problems still exist in Project Cars 2. The AI difficulty level varies greatly between cars, so be prepared to spend a lot of time searching around for the right balance. They all seem to communicate with one another and move together, even if you're in the way. If there is a wreck, count on them to just pile in. And if a car is slow from damage, then the best course of action is to slow down and just follow them. Of course. I also have mixed feelings about manual rolling starts. Instead of packing up 2x2 two two for the start, the race begins with the field completely strung out. On one hand, it eliminates many of the first turn dramas that I experienced without it, but come on, the amount of stretching of the field is ridiculous. For as much as the AI was talked about being improved for Project Cars 2, I'm not seeing it. And for as many good features as the game has, just the AI being not very good has kind of turned me off from it. In its current state, oval racing is a waste of time. Springboarding off of the previous topic, if you want to see AI at its best, go race on the oval. In the IndyCar in Indianapolis, the AI can't even start the race without shedding bodywork. And wouldn't you think this debris being shed all around the track would trigger a full course caution? Well, no, because there aren't full course cautions. Not having full course cautions on an oval is a deal breaker. Without them, the field gets strung out, followed by the AI being tripped up by damaged cars, rinse and repeat. Plus, multiplayer races aren't going to be much fun either because crashes will cause the field to get strung out there as well. Outside of those issues, the driving experience doesn't get off on the best foot. The base setup for the Indy car at Indianapolis is horrific. The car swaps ends the second you put wheel into it. Why not create a stable setup with a bunch of downforce in it just like the real life cars do to start off? Texas and the Indy car started better and I had the car driving pretty well with some changes. But the stock car at Texas was a different story. The car wouldn't even dare go left in turn one, even at a greatly reduced speed. And even with some tweaking, I was struggling to get it to feel very good. But even if we ignore these issues, why is oval racing in Project Cars 2? If you look at the rest of the game, the developers did a really great job of bundling cars and tracks together and making a cohesive experience. With oval racing, there's three tracks. What are we supposed to do with that? I mean, maybe you can argue that it works with the Indy car because they run on two of the ovals and five of the road courses in game in real life, but without custom championships, that argument kind of falls apart quickly. Bottom line, despite three well-modeled tracks, oval racing was designed to fail in Project Cars 2, and it does so for that reason and many more on top of that. Let's go ahead and get to our final thoughts and normally at this point in the video I go and I toss it over to Billy Strange so he can give his final thoughts on the game because normally we work together in tandem reviewing these titles but for some reason getting copies for Project Cars 2 was like, like they were made of gold. It was impossible to get. I, we got our copy really late and we got one copy on the PC for me. Billy just the other day got his copy but too late to be part of this review and give his thoughts into it so unfortunately if you like getting both of our thoughts that's not the case this time it's just little old me so with that said on to my final thoughts so even though i thoroughly enjoy the physics the force feedback the cars list the tracks in project cars 2 as i mentioned earlier the more and more i raced it the more frustrated i got purely with the AI. I mean, there's some other little issues that are mixed in there, but I could have some okay races, but more often than not, the AI was really spoiling the racing for me. And I'm not interested in Project Cars 2 as a hot lap simulator. I have other titles I can do that in, and they do a better job of that. I want to go racing in Project Cars 2. And right now, offline against the AI, it's tough. I mean, you can have some good experiences here and there, but overall, I was getting pretty frustrated with the AI. Now, with that said, 
Pretty soon, we're going to go online here. The game will be released and can go online and see what multiplayer is like. Multiplayer, from everything we heard, sounds like it's going to be pretty awesome for Project Cars 2. But <laughs> AI was supposed to be much more improved for Project Cars 2, and here we are. So could multiplayer not be great either? Yeah, it might not be great either. We'll just have to wait and find out. But with that said, I think there's a lot of people that will go out and get Project Cars 2 and really enjoy it from day one. If you're a sports cards fan, I can't think of a title with more content for you in terms of the cars and the tracks, modern, classic. I mean, everything is really covered well here in the sports cars world. Same thing can be said about Rallycross, even though Rallycross has a fraction of what's in sports cars in terms of just sheer cars and tracks. It's more than you can find in any other sim racing title, and the Rallycross drove pretty well and didn't really have the AI issues that I experienced with the rest of the game. So I think there are people who will go out there, purchase the game, really enjoyed it. Project Cars 2 as a whole is much better than Project Cars 1. I definitely see myself coming back to Project Cars 2 or Project Cars 1. I just, it didn't grab me. And I think that has been improved with this title. But with that said, I do think I am going to give it a pause, see how multiplayer goes, maybe see what updates come down the road, and wait and see where this all goes. So I might not be a day one buy, I might be with some of you guys waiting on the fence, seeing what the updates do, and we'll see if I jump back into it. So with that, thank you for watching our review of Project Cars 2 on the PC. If you enjoyed this video, Please give it a like, really extensive, really took a lot of time doing this video. Subscribe to Inside Sim Racing if you haven't. Check out our website, ISRTV.com, for the latest news, reviews, and our popular forums. Check out the buy sell section on our forums. You can buy and sell used sim racing equipment. Really comes in handy. Also check out the Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Click on the link, shop through Amazon, doesn't cost you a thing, but kicks back a little towards us. Again, thank you for watching Inside Sim Racing. I'm John Sable. Please take care of you and yours.